Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial on inverse functions here. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is talk about what an inverse function is and we'll investigate how to find the inverse for a given function. We'll also represent inverse functions graphically as well as algebraically. Alright, so just a little bit of review about functions in general. Remember that a function is a set of ordered pairs for which every x value there exists a corresponding y value. And uh, I've represented that using this diagram here. This is a function because if I look at all of these x values, there's only one y value associated with each. All right, so to get an inverse function, all you have to do is interchange your x and your y values. Okay, so when you do that, your domain becomes your range, your range becomes your domain. We're gonna see that in this video, but that's sort of just a quick little definition of what an inverse function is. Okay, if you just interchange your x and y values. We denote inverse functions by this symbol here. I don't usually read this as f to the power of negative one of x. I call this f inverse of x. So this is that's how I'm gonna to refer to this throughout the video. Okay, so let's look at an example. So I've given you a function here, just a set of points. You can see this is a function. It does pass the vertical line test. Remember, if you take a vertical line and pass it through your function, there should be no point where there are two points on that vertical line. All right, so it does pass the vertical line test. It is a function. I've graphed it for you already. I just want to talk about finding the inverse of this function. You can just sort of interchange our, our x and y coordinates, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I've done that for you. I've just switched my x and y coordinates around. I'm just going to quickly zip through here and plot these points for you, and then we're going to look at kind of an interesting pattern that happens uh, once, once we've plotted these points, and we compare it to our original function. So that would be our inverse function. Okay, so you can see the green is our original function. The red is our inverse function. Uh, so we've done part C, uh, just sort of an interesting trend that you might notice just by looking at this. If I were to graph the line y equals x, you can see that my inverse function is a reflection of my original function over the line y equals x. Sort of an interesting property about inverse functions that we're going to explore a little further in this video lesson. All right, so let's look at the inverse of a linear function. We just did the inverse of a function that happened to be a set of points. I'm going to walk you through a couple steps here. These steps are the same for any function. Uh, we're going to start with step one. Uh, instead of working with our f at x notation, it's a little easier just to work with our, our y x notation. So I'm going to just take my, my f at x, I'm going to switch it out for y. Uh, you can see I haven't made any other changes. These, these two functions are virtually identical still. Okay, step two is to interchange x and y. So I'm literally going to switch my x and y. Okay, so I've just switched my x and y values. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate y. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of algebra uh, to, to bring this three over to the other side, and then I'm gonna divide by two so that I can get y by itself. Okay, so I've taken my original expression, I've brought my three over, I divide both sides by two, and I've solved for y. This expression here is my inverse function. It's always a good practice, just instead of leaving it in x, y notation, it's good to just revert back to your inverse notation. Uh, so we could say, therefore, f inverse at x is going to be x minus 3 over 2. Okay, so that would be our inverse function. Now, the interesting property that we saw was that inverse functions are a reflection of the original function over the line y equals x. So you can actually check your answer and see if this is, in fact, the inverse by graphing it. You can see here the red line, this was our original line, f at x equals 2x plus 3. And the blue line here, this is what we're assuming our inverse is. And just to show you, I've graphed the line y equals x, and you can see that they are in fact a reflection over, over the, the line y equals x. Okay, so we can conclude that this is in fact our inverse. So the second question I have here for you is determine if the inverse is a function. Okay, because it as it turns out, just because a function is a function does not mean its inverse is a function. And I'm going to show that this is in fact a function by using the vertical line test. Remember, I'm going to pass this vertical line through my blue graph. You can see there's never a point on my vertical line where there's more than one point. Therefore, we can conclude that this is in fact a function. All right, next I want to look at how to find the inverse of a quadratic function. A pretty simple quadratic function here. I'm just shifting my original graph down by two units. Okay, so you'll recall the first step is to, instead of writing f at x notation, we can just rewrite this as y equals x squared minus 2. We're going to interchange our x and y values, and we're going to solve for y. Okay, so we add 2 to the other side. In this case, to isolate y, we have to take the square root of both sides, and we end up with this new expression, y equals the square root of x plus 2. 
Okay, remember it's it's just going to write our inverse in inverse notation. So f inverse of x is the square root of x plus 2. Finding the inverse of a function algebraically is not too complicated. As long as you are comfortable with algebra, it should be a piece of cake for you. All right, just a follow-up question. Is the inverse a function? This is going to be an interesting discussion. What I want to do is just sort of graph both of these functions. So my red function here, this is my original parabola. This, this line, this yellow line is y equals x. Now, you'll see here that I've graphed two loo functions. It becomes clear once you start thinking about the square root as an operation. Remember, when you take the square root of a number, you always end up with a positive answer and a negative answer. So I've done that. I've represented the positive component of a square root and the negative component of the square root. So that's how I've graphed my inverse. You can see this is, in fact, the inverse. It's a reflection over that line y equals x. But interestingly enough, because my function has a component of positive quadrants and the negative quadrants, it fails the vertical line test. So this thing, it turns out, is not a function. It's got a violation of the vertical line test here. And the reason for that is that what I'm doing when I'm finding my inverse, I'm taking the square root of y, right? So when I take the square root of y, that means I've got two solutions for my y values, which violates the vertical line test and makes this thing not a function. Okay, so just an example of a function that is a function and its inverse not being a function. Last thing I want to do in this video is show how you can determine if two functions are inverses of each other algebraically. So what I've given you is one function y1 equals x plus 5 over 6 and I want you to show me that this is the inverse of this second function y2 equals 6x minus 5. What we do is we take one function and substitute it into the other. We're going to do that for, for both functions. We're going to take y2 substitute it into y1, and we're going to take y1 and substitute it into y2. Now this is a bizarre process. What I'm going to do is take y2 and substitute it in for the x value of y1. I'm just going to write what y2 is. y2 is x, 6x minus 5, so I put it in for y2 here. I'm going to just sort of clean up my expression a little bit. My 5s are going to cancel nicely, you can see that. And I've got 6x over 6 left. 6x over 6 is x. Well, that's interesting that I got x. Uh, and remember, it's interesting because we made this conclusion that inverse functions are a reflection of the original function over the line y equals x. Well, look at that. I got x back when I substituted one function into the other. Let's see if the same thing happens when I substitute y1 into y2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take x and I'm going to put y1 in there. Uh, and I'll write it out in this way. You can see I've got y1 substituted in for x. My 6s are going to cancel out nicely. You can see that those 5s are also going to cancel out nicely. And lo and behold, we end up with x. So since our result was y equals x in both cases, we can conclude that y1 and y2 are, in fact, inverses of each other. All right, so just a quick little summary here. Inverse functions, you find these by interchanging the domain and the range. Find the inverse of a function given an equation. You replace your f at x with y, interchange x and y, solve for y. And we did a couple examples of that. Uh, we saw the conclusion that the graph of f at x is reflected over the line y equals x to get your inverse function. And if you substitute a function into its inverse, they sort of undo each other to give you that line y equals x back.